This is the first of two lessons in which you'll learn how to use the SQLite database features of the Android system. SQLite is a subset of the SQL, or Structured Query Language, relational database system. SQLite is supported in the Android system in the Android Database SQLite package. The developer's website reference page for the package is shown here. In the training section of the developer's website, there's a good page on saving data in SQL databases. It covers the basics of creating and using an SQLite database. SQLite databases can also be used as part of an Android content provider component. And you may want to review our lessons on content providers as preparation for this lesson. We'll be using the same Notepad app we did in the content provider lessons in this lesson. We'll focus on the SQLite components of that app. So let's open it up in Eclipse and start it in the emulator. In Eclipse, in the Notepad source folder, we'll open the Notepad provider Java file. And let's expand this out so we can see all the code. Lines 186 through 230 define our database helper class that extends the SQLite open helper class. This class facilitates opening the database if it exists, creating it if it doesn't exist, and upgrading it as necessary. Lines 188 through 192 define the constructor for the class. Line 191 calls the superconstructor and provides our database name and version number. Lines 199 through 208 override the onCreate method for creating the database. Lines 201 through 207 use the exec_sql method to create the database table. Lines 202 through 206 define the database column names and types. Lines 217 through 229 override the onUpgrade method, which upgrades the database from the old to new version. Lines 221 and 222 log a message that the database is being upgraded. Line 225 kills the existing table and existing data. And line 228 recreates the database with a new version. Line 243 creates a database helper object based on the class we defined above. At this point, if the database doesn't exist, it's created. However, it's not opened until its first access. So let's next look at access in the database, and we'll look at how to query the database. Line 263 creates an SQLite query builder object. This is a convenience class that helps build database queries. 264 uses the setTables method to identify the database table we're using. Lines 269 through 297 choose the projection and adjust the where clause based on URI pattern matching. And for more background on projections and using URIs, see our lessons on content providers. Lines 300 through 307 set the sort order for the results. Line 310 opens the database in read mode. Lines 317 through 325 perform the query. And if we hover over query method and scroll down, we see a listing of the parameters. The first is the database that we're going to query on. The second is a list of which columns to return. Third is a filter declaring which rows to return. Fourth selection args is the arguments to go along with our selection parameters, if these arguments exist. Next, the group by is a filter declaring how to group the rows. Having is a filter to declare which row groups to include. And sort order is how to sort the rows. Line 328 sets a notification to tell the cursor what URI to watch for changes. And 329 returns the result of the query in a cursor object. And see our lesson on content provider cursors for more information on cursors. That's the first of our two lessons on database. Let's move on to the second.